Welcome back to PSC SecBytes. Today we keep on talking about the PMP React uh, reusable controls. And specifically, I want to introduce you to the list view control, which is really powerful whenever you want to create a list of items, including support for grouping, filtering, drag and drop of files, uh, as well as custom rendering rules for fields and stuff like that. So, like always, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how you can play with this control in action. So, this is the official documentation page uh, of the PMP React Reusable Control of Type List View. And here you can see what the output is. And it looks like a regular modern list uh, in SharePoint Online. You can have grouping, you can have drag and drop of files and stuff like that. And here you can see a sample web part that I created for the sake of showing you the list view control in action. As you can see in this list, I can select items, I can have custom rendering rules for fields and stuff like that. And this is a web part which simply renders an hypothetical list of customers where every single customer is defined through these properties. And we have in the uh, web part initialization code, uh, in the render method actually, we define an array of customers, which will be just fake customer, but you can read them from a SharePoint list or from an external service or database, up to you. And once I have this custom list of customer, I'm simply going to provide it as the property, one of the properties for my React component, which is rendering uh, the UI of my web part. In the React component, I import the list view component as well as the I view field, which I will explain to you later, and the selection mode as well. All of them from the PMP SPFX controls React, and specifically from the family of the list view types. So, in the rendering of the React component, we can define an array of I view field types where I am simply declaring how every single field, every single property of the source of my data binding will be rendered. So you see here for every customer, we have a property of name ID, display name, email, level, and account. And here in the TSX file, I define that for the field with name ID, we want to use a display name ID, capital letters in the rendering of the list view, and we define eventually the minimum and maximum size of the column. And if we want to have or not to have the sorting for that column, then we do the same for the display name field, which will be called name in the UI. And here comes the interesting part, because for example, for the email field, I want to provide the custom rendering. So I simply uh, override the render property of the I view field, and I will receive the item, the index of the item in the data source and the column that I'm going to render in the UI. And I can play with this object to create a custom rendering. In my scenario, I simply read the email property of the item and I render an anchor in the UI of my list. Then I do the same with the size of the customer. Actually, the size is based on in the num, where I can have a regular, a favorite, or a top customer. So, in the TSX, in the field definition, I say that for the size field, this is the label that I want to use for the column. And then in the render method, I will go through all of the options and I will simply render a, uh, an icon from Office UI Fabric based on the flavor of my customer, of the level of my customer. And then for the account, I want to do even something more interesting. So I'm going to use the person component of MGT, of the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. As such, I'm going to render the account which is associated to the customer. So in the list of customers, I have for every customer the email address of the account in my tenant. And by using the person component of MGT, which I imported right here from MGT React, I can simply say that I want to render that person and I want to view the icon and the name because view type one line means show me the icon and just beside show me the name of the user that I'm referring to in the person component. And indeed, to use the MGT uh, components inside my web part, I need to init in the init method of my what part the provider, the SharePoint provider, as the global provider for MGT. 
which is a topic that we already covered in uh, other videos previously. So in the render method of my web part, uh, I will simply create an instance of the list view component, the one from the PMP React reusable controls. I will declare that the items I want to use as the data binding source are the customer's property that I get in the props of my React component. So those that I defined as a fake list in my uh, web part. Then I define what the fields are using the customer's view field property that I showed you before, the array of I view field types. And then I can configure eventually additional properties for my uh, list view control, like for example, the selection mode, which can be single or multiple or known, if I want to show or not to show filters, if it has to be compact size or not, and if I want to have a sticky header in case I will scroll the content. So, and there are plenty of other options available that you can find on the official documentation page. By doing that, we can simply get this kind of result, which looks really like the modern UI of SharePoint Online, even if we are binding custom data in the UI of our web parts. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. And remember, subscribe to this channel. Thank you.